Okay, this week it's the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and we will have live reports from there all week. Ford Motor is popping open the hood to app developers. We'll have that and more right here, right now on Digits. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Simon Constable, and we've got someone from Ford joining us now live from the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It's Doug Van Dagens. He is a Services Solutions Director there. Thanks for joining us, sir. You're welcome. So apps in cars, explain exactly what you're doing um, with apps in cars and, and, and why popping up in the hood to developers. So we've been doing this for a while. We started with our AppLink program, which is fundamentally technology on the vehicle side and that we hand to developers to integrate into their smartphone apps that allows the controls in the vehicle to control your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So the voice engine, the steering wheel buttons, the buttons on the touch screen. Um, uh, but what we announced here today is really um, a developer's environment that has all the tools and assets necessary to open it up to you know thousands and thousands of developers. In fact, we've got some statistics from opening the site that says we've had about 3,000 requests an hour from developers to get onto the site and, and use our tools and assets. 3,000 requests per hour. Um, yep. what, what do you hope to gain from this? Obviously, Ford is a massive company. Um, I worked in the car industry once at, at, at General Motors. Um, you tend to have a lot of resources in, in those companies a lot of great talent in-house why go outhouse as it were well in a word innovation I mean really you know to bring a lot of the innovation that you see uh, you know in the app stores today for smartphones bring that same type of innovation and creativity to the vehicle um, but allow those developers to develop uh, you know in the environments they're used to on the smartphone and the languages they're used to and I will have to say right off the top it allows us to bring in great content like the Wall Street Journal Live that we announced uh, last night is our, our first new app. Awesome well we love that obviously um, now one of, one of the things that you're, you're trying to do is to have stuff that isn't just um, like apps from a phone um, but but something different I, explain explain the difficulty with that because a phone is one thing and a car is another. Yeah, exactly. It's a great point. So, um, you know, we have some guidelines out on the site that say the type of apps we're looking for, which are uh, a lot of kind of core automotive functionality, um, navigation, location-based services, music, entertainment, productivity are all in the categories that, you know, we're encouraging. Some of the things that we don't encourage are obviously video, um, any kind of game or anything that really that takes your eyes off the road or your hands off the wheel. And that's why, you know, uh, this particular technology app link is voice based so that you can you know, keep your hands on the wheel. Mm. Now, that is important. Safety must be paramount whenever you're uh, developing anything with, with a car because they can be tr tremendously dangerous. Um, wh what things are you doing other than not having video to uh, ensure that? Well, uh, really what happens is we make it easy for the developer because the environment that they're writing to is the interior of the car and there are telematics guidelines that guide what we can display in the vehicle. The same thing you see on your radio or for climate control, those guidelines apply to what's being shown from the app. Um, and so we have, you know, controls over how the information is displayed. Um, and we also review each of the individual apps to determine which ones we think are appropriate. We also don't want anything that's too cognitively distracting, right? If it takes a lot of your attention, there's too many lines of text, those are things that we're not going to allow. But um, it hasn't dampered enthusiasm. So how, how does the app developer get um get paid I mean obviously I don't want to get into any you know um, state secrets there or, or Ford Motor secrets but the, the, we're, we're the Wall Street Journal we like to know about how the business is working yeah and I think this is the coolest part of our developers environment um, AppLink is really free on every uh, sync enabled vehicle it comes with sync and there's no incremental charge unlike you know some of our competitors who provide or charge monthly service fees but in addition to that you know, we're not charging the app developers anything to get access to the code or the test tools or any of the documentation. Um, and then they distribute the apps through the normal app stores, through iTunes or the Apple Store or Google Play or wherever. And, and whatever they can sell the app for, if they have a free version and a premium version or if they do advertising, they keep that money. Um, Ford really just allows you to control that app through the controls in the vehicle. And so we hope to sell more cars because of it because we'll have really cool applications 
um, things like you know the latest maps, the latest voice engines from in different dialects from different regions. And uh, our business model really is to bring a lot of developers to bear, uh, create a lot of cool mm -hmm. apps, and sell more Fords. Okay. Well, well, obviously, we wish you luck. Thank you very much, Doug Van Dagen, uh, um, Services Solutions Director at Ford Motor. We thank you for your time today. Thank you, Simon.